No, but ooh, I hit myself. Don't do that. No, it's November 9th and we're doing, I immediately forgot the sections too. <laughs> You're going to get red flagged. <laughs> this self This video, yes, yeah, self-harm. <laughs> Well, maybe you're going to want to self-harm yourself after you hear our opening block of economic collapse. Stripe lays off 14% of workers. But wait, there's more. Is there? Well, more, more stories oh, more like collapse. that. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much more to say about that. Yeah, just like everybody else, they've seen the writing on the wall and they're like, yeah, we don't need all these employees. Time to save money. And we learned recently of all the big, like, uh, Earnings reports, somehow Amazon pulled it through, came through and they didn't have a terrible one, but that was not enough to save them, it seems. Amazon pauses hiring for corporate workforce. You know, when the white collars start getting cut, cut uh, things are bad. They also recalled the rings of power people back to the UK. They're not filming in New Zealand. Oh, what does that mean? That means they're going to have to try to move all those sets and stuff over. Does that really save a lot of money? I wouldn't think so, unless they get some sort of tax break. But they were already getting tax breaks from New Zealand, so. You think they're going to cancel it? I don't think they'll cancel it. They've put too much money into it. Well, this could certainly have had something to do with that, because Amazon was part of a very small, very powerful group of companies, and they are no longer. Well, I don't know. As of the recording, I think they are still under, under what they need to be. Amazon sell-off pushes market cap below one trillion for first time since April 2020. Yikes! Six percent drop in their stock price, and they can no longer call themselves a trillion-dollar company. Apple just yes, <laughs> yes. He just punches through a wall. The whole wall is covered in holes from where he just punches it all the time. You think Tim Cook can get his hand through a wall? He gets like a, a really thin drywall and has them replace it. <laughs> he demands that his security guy punched the wall <laughs> yeah, he, he sees that on the news and he's like tim other he names his security guy also tim and tells him to go punch a wall and uh uber they have also been facing some some issues and now they have this guy who has some crazy eyes saying that their business model is inherently flawed it's an unflattering photo uber whistleblower says current business model absolutely unsustainable he talked a lot about the uh, the whole gig worker thing and, uh, you know, not an employee, but rather a contractor. That's already being stopped in so many countries like New Zealand. It seems like th there's no way that's going to survive, right? Yeah. With the current political climate and the way that, you know, like the whole great resignation and people fighting for workers' rights and that kind of thing, it doesn't seem like it's going to stand up. And if it doesn't, can Uber be a functional company? This guy says no. It seems like, yeah, they're kind of... Banking on people not having a lot of options. Yeah. So it's unfortunate for them. And none of these pages are loading. The this JavaScript is, is end gadget website. It's struggling. Come on. Oh, yeah, there, it goes. there we go. And of course, when a, a company, you know, other than firing everybody, what can you do to fight the economic collapse? T-Mobile will start charging a $35 fee on all new activations and upgrades. And what's that even for? Even if you do it yourself online. The ISPs have been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Self-install? You want to self-install? Okay, go ahead and self-install. It'll save you a day of waiting. Oh, we're still going to charge you for that. So. <laughs> you didn't do anything. Yes, my work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. And Charter, we learned that Charter was giving its users more internet speed. And that was a beautiful thing. But then Comcast, who I think Comcast is owned by Charter, right? Yeah. Um, we learned that Comcast customers would have to have specialized equipment. And they'd have to lease it from Comcast, which was what, 25 a month? Something, something like, like that. that. So I was like, oh, well, you're kind of just charging me more when you're giving me more speed. And they were like, well, no, the actual price increase was coming later. Charter raises base internet to $80 a month. Price hikes to 9.5 million users. This is for their lowest tier as well. So that's going to go 80, 100, and 120 for the three tiers on Spectrum. Oh, maybe Charter owns Spectrum and Comcast is a different one. Yeah, Charter does own Spectrum. That's right. Anyway, they're all doing it because inflation and economic collapse and bad business models, despite the monopoly. 
We pay a lot for internet. I mean, it's necessary, but... I pay less to get the fiber. Yeah, it's crazy. Though, to be fair, it drops out all the time, too. I don't know if that's their fault, though. I think yeah. it is. I think it's the, the NAT and the fact that I'm not using their equipment. Oh, they don't like that? They're punishing you. I don't know. Hoddle knot? Is that how you'd pronounce that? A terrible name. I mean, I, I know it means hold on for dear life, uh -huh. but a terrible name. And apparently... A terrible business model. Crypto leader Hodlnot lost almost 190 million in Terra Crash report. They're going to make sure that, that the money goes back to their people who invested, right? Well, they're not necessarily failing yet. They might be able to hold on, but they have now announced that uh, the whole Terra Luna thing, they owned a lot of that. And now they don't own anything. Look at all the social media icons on this site. They're in the sidebar, they're underneath the photo, they're on the other sidebar. They app. really want you to share it. Oh, I would love to have the Decrypt app on my phone. Who wouldn't want that? And, of course, another Bitcoin miner. I don't know if any of the Bitcoin miners are going to survive at this point. Bondholders of troubled Bitcoin miner core, sci scientific, said to be working with lawyers, report. Bankruptcy lawyers. Uh, Those are the lawyers that they're working with. Lawyers to protect their asset and continue to build their business. No. Because uh, Bitcoin mining has failed in a big way and all these companies were, uh, they were holding the bag as the bag was yanked away. Uh. Here's, I don't know if this is like, considering we're looking at all these ways that everybody's getting destroyed in business and people don't have any money and people are starving. And yet this money was available. I don't know what that says about us. Nothing good. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 breaks franchise record with 800 million sold in three days. I haven't uh, seen a lot of, I mean, I'm not a big Call of Duty guy, but I haven't seen a lot of hype about this. Have you been seeing I haven't seen any hype. I had one friend who picked it up and then he was trying to get all of us to play it. And then we looked it up at $70. We were like, no, nah, dude, no. It is true that it seems like gaming it just becomes more and more mainstream as we go along and as younger generations grow into that, you know, age where they can buy their own games. Yeah. So I guess this is probably just going to be an ongoing thing. Right? $70, but it has all the microtransaction crap in it too, I'm sure. Is $70 the cheapest one? I think so. Wow. I think that's the base price. I could be wrong. Correct me, but. What are they thinking? Yeah, I was like, I don't I'm not paying that for a game. Well, I guess what they're thinking is we're going to make $800 million. Uh. And the uh, Call of Duty franchise has actually been in like international courts at this point because the argument is this is such a juggernaut. And as we can see by the sales numbers, it certainly is that if Microsoft owns it by merging with Activision Blizzard, will they cut other people off? They're trying to stop that from being a belief, although I think they will eventually. If they yes. Can. Microsoft promises eternal support for Call of Duty on PlayStation. So they'll change the name, right? Yeah, exactly. They'll change the name or, yeah, or, you know, they'll do like they did with Overwatch where, oh, Overwatch 1 servers are going away. Now we have this other game you have to play. We have a new game fr franchise. It's called Answering the Call of Duty. Mm. It's new and different. And it's Microsoft exclusive. Uber, uh, you know, one thing about Uber, their business model might be not great, but they do have that real estate on people's phones. Yeah. You have that app on your phone because you might need it if you're drunk or the car breaks down or whatever. And while they're on your phone, you know what they're saying? Why don't we take advantage of that? Uber tests push notification ads, a feature literally no one wants. They were already talking about running ads on the app, but push notification is a next level. The reporter here got one at 9 a.m. Imagine you've been out drinking the night before. Oh, and you you get back, home? yeah, and then you get an ad the next morning. Mm. That's disgusting. But we did learn last week that Uber is like really serious about getting into ads. And apparently aggressively. Windows 11, <laughs> I've not upgraded it, have you? I don't think I, no, no. They'll force us into it eventually. But for now, we're not alone. Windows 11 runs on fewer than one in six PCs. 10 is still king. Also, an interesting uh, other factoid from here, more sevens than eights. No one is running Windows 8. I remember a lot of people being upset when 8 came out. It was garbage. Yeah. 
And we have some new features from Google. All of them are a little bit big brotherish, although I guess it is a convenience. Google's building package tracking right into your Gmail inbox. That you, means they're reading my tracking emails. Yeah, they want to see your tracking number so you can click on it directly. Now, they already have, you know what drives me crazy is if you get uh, like a FedEx or a USPS tracking number from Amazon, and we'll talk about that here. I have to click on that thing, and then I have to go to Amazon, who will not give me the full information. Then I copy and paste the number. Then I Google the number. Then Google gives me their, yeah. but it's not current. It doesn't update constantly. Oh, so I you have need, to go to the website and then... They're caching a version of that. So then I have to go further and click through, and it's like eight clicks to get to my tracking number. Now, the reason they point out here, The Verge, the, the reason that Amazon does that is because Amazon doesn't want Google to know what products you're buying from Amazon because then Google will take that data and build it into their customer profile and give them a better advertising edge than Amazon. And then we all suffer for it. Absolutely, yeah. We all have to click eight times because of that nonsense. Did I add that twice? Oh, no, it's the same. They just use the same stock image each uh, time. That's funny. And it's kind of about the same kind of thing. Google's new shopping features can help you snag good deals. My husband got included in this. He was mad about it because he was like, look up bed sheets on Google real quick. And mine just looked like normal, but I guess he was seeing ads for lots of different types of bed sheets instead of relevant results. What was he getting the like coupon codes? Yeah, stuff. I think so. And a lot of uh, browser plugins already do this. Google just kind of took that idea and baked it in, I guess. I feel like search results are getting less and less relevant. Google search results. Yeah, there was another story I didn't include it, but people were... Uh, constantly searching sites that you wouldn't expect like reddit to try to get information because the google search were so bad i do that a lot of times if i'm looking for like a review or just general information that comes from a human and not a robot yeah though now reddit i mean reddit's always been compromised but it's been getting worse for advertising every year it's wild that google has fallen so far in terms of search i mean they had that locked down and now we let advertisers get to it. That's the problem with everything anymore. And the other problem that Google has is it is so ready to put the blade to all of its products. And now we have two today. Google is shutting down its dedicated Street View app next year. This is for mobile. I panicked a little bit when I saw this. I was like, no more Street View, but it's just on your phone. Well, you can still even do Street View on the website on your phone. Yeah. But there was a dedicated app that was nothing but Street View that will be removed. I don't think I even had, I don't think most people probably had that. Uh, a little superfluous, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe we won't miss that one quite that much, but some people will miss this one. Rip Google Hangouts, Google's last best chance to compete with iMessage. So yeah, it seems like uh, people don't really use it, so it's going to die. If uh, if they end up coming up with some sort of messaging standard, that kind of makes sense to kill that. I don't know that it'll happen, but. I was on my Gmail and they, you know, they redesigned Gmail. And now it's got like the chat thing integrated into it. Yeah. So I was clicking on it. I was like, can I get rid of this? And there was one thing. It was like, just go do not disturb for, and then you can set a calendar date when to turn it back on. I was like, okay, do not disturb forever. So I just went like way out in the future. You can only do not disturb for one year. Oh. It turns itself back on after a year. Thank goodness. (laughs) But if you are all in on the Google ecosystem and you say, I only have Google products in my home and I will only game on a Chromebook, or maybe you're one of those poor people who only has a Chromebook for gaming. This is good news for you. Steam on Chromebooks enters beta, adds AMD support. Previously, you had to have an Intel CPU. It had to be an i5 from a fairly recent generation, and it had to have the integrated Intel graphics, the Z graphics. But uh, now they've opened it up to more of the AMD products, and they've increased game compatibility there's also a list in that article if you're interested to know if that affects you of the chromebooks that it'll work with yeah what a tough life gaming on a chromebook gotta do what you gotta do now i imagine that you had already heard about this one and were probably somewhat upset i don't it doesn't really affect me since i do digital work but Oh, this is just for the print. Yeah, this is usually used for print stuff. Interesting. You're going to have to pay to use some fancy colors in Photoshop now. This is the Pantone libraries. Pantone is removing their libraries from new copies of Photoshop. 
Apparently, because Photoshop Adobe didn't update them. They're like, there are literally hundreds of colors that aren't in their products, and they just don't want to renew their license with them. Kotaku offers several workarounds, uh, one of which is just pull the library and make a backup of it. And then yeah. every time Adobe updates your software, replace the library. I, I don't use it that often because, again, I work in digital, so we're doing a different color space. But kind of sucks if you're locked into something in print, like some Pantone colors you have to use for certain brands. And they're very particular about that, so that kind of sucks. But When I first learned about that way back in the day, it really confused me. But I guess it's the difference of things that generate light and things that light bounces off of, right? You're right, like truth? CMYK versus right. yeah, RGB, yeah. One is an additive, one is subtractive. Amazing. Amazing what these eyes of ours can do. Even ones that are terribly damaged, like yours. Yeah. And Discord has gotten a bit of a, a bad reputation in terms of censorship, shutting things down. Although a lot of horrible things were going on on Discord, so I can I can see their pain. It's hard to manage people. It really is. It's pretty bad, and so they've gotten serious about it. Discord bans 68,000 servers and 55 million accounts. Honestly, I haven't heard of any community, like, I don't know of any communities that have been affected by this. Apparently, it's mostly, like, exploitative stuff is what they said they were taking down. Yeah, there's a lot. Remember we learned about, um, like, there was some young girl playing Roblox or something. Yeah, it's like that and kind of stuff. They lured her into the Discord, and then there were nudes, and yeah, it's, uh, it's unpleasant. You know what I hate, though, is there's this new trend for software. I was playing Stalker Gamma, which is like a total mod rebuild of the game, and installing it is a bit of a pain. And when you go to like how to install this, they're like, well, here's a YouTube video. I don't want a YouTube video. I hate that too. I want text. And they're like, well, just go to the Discord. Just read it on the Discord and ask questions on the Discord. But then no. you have to join their Discord and then you have yet. to leave the Discord. I don't want to join your Discord. I don't want to watch your videos. I don't want to just text. Just give me text. Yeah. But no, it doesn't exist. I don't mind the videos if they're short. You know what I mean? Like if it's just like, here's a two minute video walking you through it even that is uh, i don't just, like it when it's like a 20 minute intro and then you know like favorite and subscribe and then they take like the longest time to explain it it's always bad don't do it and meta and i did not put this in the social media section because this is i don't think this is social media related necessarily this is just general software yeah. meta's ai powered audio codec promises 10 times compression over mp3 I don't know a whole lot about audio. Is that is that great? Well, yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive. But do you... I, I always hear, like, compressed to hell. Don't you not want that? Well, for music, yeah, you lose something, certainly. I mean, the music purists want the... Uh, the highest quality, yeah. Lossless. Yeah. But this is not necessarily for that. This is more for if you have low bandwidth, voice, and streaming audio. mm you're, it's not going to be choppy. Like a podcast, like this. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And it is impressive. I mean, you lose something when it puts it back together, but they're saying that there's is almost as good as MP3 in terms of quality. I don't know what bit rate they're competing with. Oh, 64 kilobit MP3. Oh, yeah. There's that's, an image right there. That's really low. A 64 kilobit MP3 is pretty trash. Like anything below 192, I can hear. Oh, 320 versus lossless, I have trouble with. They say as you get older, your ears degrade. Yeah, I can believe and that. And like young people might be able to pick that out, but now I can't, which is depressing. Uh, like the, the mosquito tone on cell phones. Where oh, it like yeah, yeah. It's very similar to that, right? So I guess that's good. Although, if we, you know, if we they bake that into the online stuff, we'll just lose quality. Yeah. Well, uh, Uber, as we mentioned, business model, maybe not the best. They're doing some nasty things to try to keep their business afloat. This should terrify them. Teleport creators raise $9 million to build decentralized Uber rival on Solana. I read this and I was like, this is a little bit weird soup for me. So the idea here is what they want to do or what they have done is what the EU wants social media to be. Like, instead of Twitter just being Twitter, Twitter has a protocol that they use 
that anybody else can also use. Okay. So Plus, like, like web standards. Kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. So let's say that, you know, Uber starts using, or this, these people will start using trip. I could just as easily do my own version of trip. Okay. And it could intercommunicate if I desired that. And so that way, you know, if you have something going on on trip, you could just move it to someplace else and it's not a big deal. And that way, if someone like Uber does something horrible, you can skip to a different app that does the yeah, same thing. The next competitor is immediate and they don't really have to do a lot of the work to, to get it up to speed. Well, that sounds good. But in this article, it mentions Jake Paul as an investor. And that's like, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't hate something just because they give that thing money, right? Uh, Seems like a good idea. We'll influencer see. Jake Paul. We'll see what happens with it. And... Uh, this one actually was updated, so it, the, the crazy headline is not as crazy, but we'll go ahead and read it. Cheaper Netflix with ads plan is not supported on Apple TV. Update coming soon. By the time you watch this, it might actually already be there. Yeah. They were just waiting to roll it out later. Though, I don't know if we had a story about this. Apparently, the new ad-supported tier, it doesn't have um, The Crown or Arrested Development. Mm. And I'm like, oh... Guess that it's back sense. to pirating. Some of us never stopped. And this is terrifying. And I think a lot of people are going to do this because this seems like a really convenient thing. But oh boy, uh, I wouldn't even dream of doing this. New Mac app wants to record everything you do so you can rewind it later. Now you're thinking immediately like, oh my God, they're moving all my stuff to the cloud. They say no. no. They say it's going to be insane compression. So, I I don't know if they're also, it sounds like they were even going to replay the clicks. But it, when you look at it like that, it seems like they're only just copying video or everything you did. They, had, they said it would all be searchable. So I'm like, how are they going to make that? Like, a say you do a one hour phone call with a client. Is it going to transcribe it? And is it going to transcribe it accurately? Hell of a claim, though, to have that kind of compression. But they say that they can definitely do it. So potential privacy issues, all of them. Yeah. There's yeah. a headline in the article. So many. And they're, they're really trying to get ahead of that. It's like, oh, for your eyes only, it's only local. You control it. For now. But think about this. Every time that the government doesn't like what you're doing, the first thing that you're going to do is come to your house and take all your electronic devices. Or it'll reach a point where there's too much crap. And then it's like, well, just back up to the cloud. Yeah. And well, people you, are like, well, I don't want to lose my meeting notes. And then they'll just do it. It would have to be like a surveillance camera that just overrode itself mm. after a certain time, right? Which then, depending on how much stuff you do, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? Because you're not making a comprehensive archive at that point. Yeah. Expand your storage. That's cheap to do on Apple computers. Mm. Moving on to hardware, I'm sure that Wendell hates missing this one because, you know, he's... Oh, he, he I hate it when to, he misses it, too, because I struggle to read the hardware names. <laughs> There's not a lot of... Uh, this one is... Uh, AMD seems to have said, you know what? We're not going to bother competing for the ridiculous brass ring of having the fastest. What we want is the most efficient. And based on the number we've seen so far, it seems like they've achieved that. AMD unveils Radeon RX 7900 XTX, this is a small headline, 7900 XT for performance per watt gaming leadership. So performance per watt, meaning it's much lower power than the flagship NVIDIA cards. But for the power that you give it, you get more performance than comparative NVIDIA cards. Considering we're all a little bit afraid for the electricity situation, that seems like probably a wise direction to move in. Certainly with that, I mean, considering the 4090, and the power issues that it has been having recently. The melting. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it makes sense. I mean, if you've got, I'm running the 12900K. And with this seasonable warmth that we've been having lately, I don't have to run heat. No. <laughs> it just heats the room. Do you have your computer in a small room or like out in your living room? Or? My living room is not huge, but it's like opens up into the kitchen and the hallway. And, and it's, it's still warm enough it's to. It's all fine. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, this is the chiplet stuff. They're really doubling down on the chiplets and trying to get that efficiency. It's got more cash. It's got more of like the AI stuff on it. And overall, not a huge step up, but very efficient. 
I would consider one. My gaming habits right now, I don't, I'm never pushing my video card. No, I feel like all the games that I'm excited for are all small, like indie games that usually aren't performance heavy. Yeah. We played. Uh, I guess Snowpiercer was. It wasn't too bad. Like I didn't have any issues with it. Snowpiercer. Or not Snow. Snow, Snow Runner. Runner. The, the the trucking game. It's got pretty good graphics. I don't think there's an NDA, but Wendell did reveal that uh, they were running Overwatch at 300 plus FPS. Overwatch Two. Yeah. But that's not a really tough game to run. No, it's usually. Well, I haven't played Overwatch Two, but the first one was really well optimized. You played Overwatch 2. I did the beta, but I didn't. Oh, I haven't done it, the final. It's probably not different. No, probably not. They also canceled one of the betas. It's literally like they were just like, quick, push it out. <laughs> Make money. Well, we have a release date. Unfortunately, you will not be getting the PlayStation VR for Christmas because it won't be out. But good news, you can pre-order it. You can pre-order it for Christmas. And you can just give somebody a little piece of paper that says eventually someday. I owe you. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can have this eventually someday. Uh, the bad news is it's going to cost more than a console. PlayStation VR 2 release date and price revealed. Yes, that's more than a PlayStation 5. So it's going to be uh, $599.99. Whew. That is pricey. In these inflationary times? These guys used it. They said the, the display was great. It was comfortable. And they liked it. But... Uh, very expensive. One of these videos had a uh, Horizon Zero Dawn in VR, which looked pretty cool. How I don't they, think it's six hundred dollars cool, but how do they deal with the locomotion in that game? It, I couldn't tell from the clip. The clip they showed was like him pulling back on a bow, and then him pulling back on like uh, like some sort of giant crossbow sort of thing. But what about walking? That's yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, the walking will make you puke. Although maybe when the hardware gets good enough, that won't be the case. Except like our human hardware, that's an inner ear thing. Because you're perceiving motion, but you're not actually moving. The inner ear isn't. Actually, I think that would probably mean the better the graphics get, higher graphical fidelity would be more puke, right? I would think, Because yeah. you'd be tricking your brain. You're like, oh, I'm walking, but you're not actually walking. Hmm. I don't know if anyone has tried a more recent VR. It's been a few years since we did it. Well, I did feel that, though. It's interesting that Qualcomm is like just part of their business model is constantly being in litigation. Yeah. Everybody sues everybody when it comes to chip making. And uh, now that ARM is getting more and more popular and all these other uh, chip makers are trying ARM versions, we got, you know, Microsoft, Intel, all these people, uh, they maybe are getting a little bit full of themselves and they think that they can do what they want when it comes to the big boys. ARM Qualcomm legal battle suggests OEMs need ARM IP licenses, not chip firms. So right now, Qualcomm, for example, would license the ARM chips and then they would sell the chips down the road. But ARM is saying, no, Qualcomm is not playing fair. We now are going to license directly with the people who are selling the ultimate product. And Qualcomm is like, no, you can't just skip us. And ARM says, yes, we can. So of course, this legal battle will go on for decades. Yeah. <laughs> It'll probably ultimately slow ARM down. Is that what we need? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, TSMC are saying that we have learned so much from these new architectures. You know, the when Intel took a crap on the chiplets and they're like, oh, look, they're building them with Lego blocks. How stupid. And then a couple of years later, they're like, yeah, we're doing that too. It's great. Well, turns out everybody wants to do that. And TSMC wants to help. TSMC wants to unleash a flood of chiplet designs with 3D Fabric Alliance. So, yeah. And they want to make it easier for everybody. Probably good. We have officially given up on the monolithic dies at this point, I guess. I like the word chiplet a lot. It is a fun Satisfying word. to say. Someone should use that in, uh, like, potato chip marketing. Oh, yeah. Chiplets. Yeah. Probably get sued at this point, right? Yeah. TSMC. Oh, we've already got a legal letter drafted for that. Uh, someone could confuse the, your potato wafers mm. with our silicon wafers, and we can't have that. Can eat both. 
Well, this is an interesting follow up because we've been following the story for two weeks about Amazon and Google fighting over the TV space. Amazon and Google make peace over smart TV competition, but it's an uneasy piece. Yeah, it's not really a piece. Yeah. So it had to do with this uh, TCL. They make the TVs and they came back to Am Amazon. They're like, hey, listen, we would love to do business with you, but Google will not tolerate that. They will beat us if we do that. <laughs> and so once it was publicized, Amazon and Google kind of came to the table and they worked it out for this one instance. Yeah. But moving forward, probably going to be more, more slap a, fights coming. Yeah, more of a battleground on that. What? No. Uh, that's oh. a pretty good little picture there, isn't it? He looks really ominous with a mouth. Also, the scale of the mouth is very large. Well, they probably didn't want to resize the Amazon logo too much. Yeah. But what is not mentioned here, which is what I need, dumb TV. Where's the dumb TV? That, no dumb one's going to do that anymore because they want to know what you're watching so they can advertise to you. And Microsoft, they have a plan and my God. They already do this. Only Microsoft could come up with something this stupid. Microsoft mulls cheap PCs supported by ads subs. Want a low cost machine? Agree to the... <laughs> Oh, I can't read that that far away. It's being bar bombarded with ads. So this is going to be, you know, basically a cloud thin client. It's going to get you into your Office 365 and you're going to do everything through that. You'll be watching ads while you do all of that. And you have to pay a monthly fee after you get your cheap laptop. That just makes me want to punch a wall. And I punch my own walls. I don't have Tim do it for me. Mm. Also, unrelated, go down to the very bottom of this page. Uh, see, there's like that that thing there. You can just hit OK on that and walk through it. You don't have to actually answer anything. Does it show me the results? I think so. I didn't go all the way through it, but I was like, oh, this is not coded well. <laughs> it's just like that. Yeah, you can just... Because there was another article from the register, and I was like, can I click this without answering? And you totally can. Who does that? Oh, look, it keeps jumping me back down there. Yeah, it wants you to fill what that a out. Terrible website. In New York City, uh, maybe, you know, the whole right to repair thing, maybe this is a bad reason to do that, or maybe it's a good reason. It's hard to tell, but this is definitely a problem they're having. Fires from exploding e-bike batteries multiply in New York City, sometimes fatally. So they have an army of delivery drivers. Ooh. And they drive these e-bikes because, you know, it's obviously it's a lot easier on you to drive these things. It's going uphill, yeah. And uh, the problem is... Because their the, their work schedule and their long hours and the weird times they might have to work, you can't just have one e-bike. You gotta rotate through them. Three or four, so that's a multiplier on your chances of a fire. Also, if you own four different brands, you might try charging them with the same charger. But we don't have universal chargers for e-bikes. I wonder if that'll be used as a we need a universal charging standard lawsuit one day. And if you bang them up at all, if those uh, batteries take any kind of damage, the risk really just goes through the roof here. Wow. Also, counterfeit batteries are obviously an issue. And when you live on top of other people and the bike is at the bottom, uh. huge problem. I wonder what the theft rate on those is. I don't know. We've got some in the, the city near us now. Or they're, they're scooters, actually. They're scooters. Motorized scooters. But those are the rental ones, right? Yeah, yeah. You can rent them downtown. Now, those get charged at designated charging stations, Yeah, right? I don't yeah. think you can charge them. No, you can't just, like, plug in a wall charger and plug, charge the cities. So it's probably a little safer. And finally, I thought this was just funny to throw in because, like, first of all, it's a really, really bad mark on you if you work with these people at all these days, at least in certain circles. And the other thing is, like, they're, how could you be more oil industry than these guys? But they're talking about diversifying out of it. I guess they really believe that, yeah. we're, that we're moving away from it. Saudi Wealth Fund sets up electric car joint venture with Foxconn. What I thought was weird about this is that they're wanting to do the city, right? And that's all supposed to be trains, right? Why would they invest in electric cars? Well, I don't think you're allowed to have a car in the Lion City. Right? Yeah, so, like... Maybe they're just trying to make sure that they cover everything in case the Lion City doesn't work out. Well, I mean, they do have more people than can live in the Lion City. Other I, people got to get around. You know, the people who clean the Lion City have to get to and fro. I thought they were going to do a train. That's but, how it was supposed to work. But I don't think the they won't live there. 
they're going to only let, I thought the whole point of the Lion City was that everyone could live in it. And then everything you need was within walking distance. And if you didn't have it within walking distance, you'd rode the train. But there's no way that you could afford it on a janitor's salary. That's like uh, all those beautiful, like the Turks and Caicos and all those uh, resorts and stuff. They will literally boat the workers back and forth. Yeah. I don't know. They don't get to live there. Here's you don't one. want the filthy pores in Yaum. Yeah, exactly. Uh. You gotta get them to and fro, and you can't be putting pollutants into the Lion City. Uh. It's a beautiful green place. This is not really tech related necessarily, although this affects uh, ebooks. Yeah. Ebooks are a big part of this, obviously. It would but it will probably be relevant in other cases that will be tech related. This is just it shows that our government has been basically a rubber stamp for mergers up until this point, but it seems like they really are pushing back now. Judge blocks Penguin Random House, Simon and Schuster merger. These are two of the largest publishing houses, I think, anywhere. Yeah, for sure. And Penguin and Random House, I think, only merged in like 2014. And they're like, why can't we do it again? Let's crush all competition. Yeah, and the judge just, was like, no. Why can't we just control everything that people read? That's a good one. They will appeal it. And I think their appeal chances are not zero, unfortunately. Uh -huh. They have too much power. I tried this and I thought the interface was absolutely terrible. I feel it's true of anything Amazon touches. Have you looked at this at all? I haven't looked at this, but like even just browsing stuff on Prime on their website is garbage. Every time I wanted to play a song, it would try to give me a shuffle list. And I don't understand why. And I, I didn't care enough to keep looking into it. I just thought, I don't like I'm this. just not going to bother. Yeah. yeah. Amazon Prime now comes with a full music catalog of 100 million songs and ad-free podcasts. We're trying desperately to compete with Spotify, but our UI is garbage, so it will never work. Spotify's UI is not great. It's not great, but it's I, I don't have a problem finding new music on it. Oh, I, I just don't like that it promotes podcasts to me all the time. One thing I liked more about Amazon is if I searched for a specific song name, it didn't show me a bunch of other garbage. Yeah. It's nearly impossible to search for a specific song on Spotify. And let's say, like, if it's a song name that a million people have written a song called that, you might never find the one you're looking for. You have to, yeah, no, put the artist in yeah. for it to pull. On Amazon, I saw almost all the artists because it zeroed in on the exact name rather than just starting to fill in the blanks with other garbage. Mm. So their search seems better, but their interface was not great. Yeah. And the new learning uh, paradigm, I suppose, is online. It seems like we're going to stick with that. And even the most powerful holdouts are getting chipped away. Wharton, Berkeley, NYU offering online MBAs for the first time. The thing that staggered me that I struggled to get past in the very first line of this article was that some of these institutions cost $223,000. Yeah, because these are the big boys. These are the big names. That would pay my mortgage. War you know who went to Wharton? Mr. Donald Trump. And uh, so one of the other big names that is holding out and refusing to do this is Georgetown Business. Really? And they talk about how Georgetown business students are coming to these schools and they're like, yeah, if I can do online, what they don't want to do is they don't, these, these are like the Elon Musks of the world, right? Mm. They are just like driven to keep pushing and building their career and doing all this. So they want to work while they go to school online and the traditional programs aren't really built for that. Man, it really is. Higher education really isn't about education. I guess it hasn't been for a while, but it well, really does feel like just diploma factories now. They point out that especially MBAs, because, you know, business, yeah. you want to do a lot of networking. Mm -hmm. So you want to meet people while you're getting your MBA who you can then use to leverage when you get the job uh, or start the business. And online, are you going to get that? The question. Yeah. Well, you probably, if you're paying $200,000 for a degree, you probably already have those connections. You just need the degree so that way you can have a check mark on your resume. Maybe. Could be. Because you're already rich. That's definitely how Trump did it, isn't it? Mm. That's how a lot of them do it. And Netflix, they, this whole gaming thing, they seem to be serious about it. It's not going anywhere, but they just won't stop. Netflix adds sixth gaming studio with acquisition of Spry Fox. I looked them up. The description in the article called them a cozy gaming company. And uh, when I looked up their their catalog of games, it was all like cuddly bear themed. Well, they, I didn't recognize any of them. Are those mobile games? I don't 
think so, but I didn't look at them too closely. Triple Town, Alpha Bear, Cozy Grove. Oh, Cozy because they made Cozy Grove, maybe. Well, the, the, the whole vibe of the games is it's, it's kind of like cutesy, cute art style, really colorful. I could see Not that. high stakes sort of gameplay. Like, like a bored housewife. And she's on Netflix and she's got nothing to do. Oh, it's, or it's like, like Stardew yeah. kind of thing well, where it's, yeah, it's cozy. Tell, Stardew was a masterpiece. How dare you? Yeah, but Star, Stardew's not like high octane gameplay. It's kind of relaxing. That's the point. How am I going to marry the right girl if I don't put all of my effort into my farm? Didn't she marry Haley? There's a picture of her over there. You guys can't see it. Yeah. Haley's she, not the right girl. She seemed like the, like the hardest to get. <laughs> you wanted the challenge. And I wanted to like teach her what it was like to live on the farm. Wasn't she uh wasn't she an alcoholic or is that one of the guys? That was just my backstory. For oh, okay. There's one of the guys though who wants wine all the time. Uh, that was my thing. I gave everybody wine. But there was a couple of teetotalers that got mad if you gave them wine. It's oh. like, come on. Really? I mean that even You can if, use it in cooking. Or yeah, whatever, you know, resell it. You don't have to complain about it. Oh, thanks for the gift, asshole. Yeah, really. It's, I would never marry those girls and start it. And uh, Apple, of course, they have a couple of stores that have unionized. And it's not all of them, just a couple of them. And the, Apple has done a couple of petulant things since then, all to do with what they say is, hey, now that you have collective bargaining, you must do everything through collective bargaining. And if we decide to give the other people around you perks, we can't give that to you because we have to bargain with your union. Apple employees. <laughs> I'm, I can't hear me because I'm not in the mic. I can't read it from here. Mac Apple, Rumors is so small. Apple employees at Unionized Maryland store filed labor board complaint after being denied benefits. So everybody else around them got these perks. Do you remember what it was? Perk 30s. It was something really nice. And they didn't give to them. And they're like, hey, you're retaliating against this. And Apple's like, no, 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 we're not retaliating against you. You have to go to your union rep and talk to them about this. You cannot talk to us because well, now you are. Collecting. Will any judge believe that, though? That's definitely retaliation. I think they could get away with that, though, the way the unions are set up. The unions themselves like that, probably. They like being the, the, the middle go between. Yeah. yeah. Gives them a lot of power. But of course, I do full. Like, absolutely believe that it's just Apple screwing with these people. Yeah, they're just doing it. Yeah. They probably... It's not even a question. I doubt they ever had a plan to give those perks to the other people. No. It was literally just like, yeah. no, we'll punish these guys who are in the union. And, of course, that's a, you know, a chilling effect because now... Oh, well, there's the motorcycles. Motorcycle season is lasting longer than usual. Well, it's because we've year. had this nice, like, it's 60s during the day, 50s at night. Like Today's in the 70s. A gorgeous November day today. Yeah. You gotta take your loud-ass bike out. And rev it while you're waiting in a red light. You have to rev it. He's revving it right now. I don't know if they can hear it. But Apple now has done something that they did agree to do. And no one, I guess, maybe didn't expect them to actually follow through with it. But after a long time, they're finally doing it. Apple's 100 million small developer assistance fund starts paying out. So this had to do with some people complained. And I think they sued them for saying that. Apple was doing a lot of anti-competitive stuff when it came to app developers. Right. And by doing that, they were costing them a lot of money. And they kind of like, you know, like, here's how we're losing money based on that. And Apple said, you know what? We're going to put together a fund and we're going to do something about this. And it took a really long time, but that was August 2021 <laughs> when that happened. Not 2022. That was over a year ago. But now finally, it seems that you get a very suspicious looking text message. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and if you actually go through with it, which you probably shouldn't get in the habit of doing that, they might send you $8,000. Yeah. If I saw that, I'd be like, I don't, I don't trust that. Through Venmo too. Yeah. But Dan Lavelle got his eight grand. He was excited about it. I would be too. If eight, eight grand just showed up in my, my bank account, I'd be thrilled. Though I'd also be confused and scared. Sometimes that happens, and if you don't report it, you go to jail because they made a mistake. What if you didn't use it? You still go to jail? Yeah, well, most people do use it. I don't know. Elon Musk, boy, he's been in the news a lot, hasn't he? I hate him so much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's going I'm to... I'm satiated on Elon Musk. He's going to tell us about... Uh, or I mean, his, his antics 
have once again manipulated the crypto market. Dogecoin surges on Elon Musk's Twitter deal. That's an unflattering angle of a photo of Elon Musk. Yeah. The mainstream media has once again turned on Mr. Musk. He is the, the, the major enemy right now. I mean, he's insufferable. I feel for a variety of reasons. I hate him less now. Like I'm not able to hate him at my maximum anymore because now everybody else has turned on him and I'm like, maybe I shouldn't join that crowd. You're just contrarian. Now yeah. you're gonna defend him. I can't defend him, but I'm in a weird spot. Yeah. That's kind of like with Trump, right? You can like, just hate him in, in a different way than everybody else. Trump is so hated, I can't join those insane people and hate him. But at the same time, I can't defend him. Yeah. So it's like, here we are now with Musk in the same way. Don't know how to feel about him. And JP Morgan, now, if you remember the CEO of JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, once said that cryptocurrency was just pure fraud. Hmm. Things have changed. JP Morgan executes first DeFi trade on public blockchain. It was with Singapore, maybe, or Korea. Oh, yeah, Singapore, who just introduced new crypto laws because of the whole uh, Terra thing. But, yeah, I don't understand exactly what this contract was. It was through Ethereum, a layer two Ethereum, Polygon. But anyway, JP Morgan's a part of it, and they were excited enough about it to press release it. They paid money to have that put in the press. We did a thing, guys. And this is also is not really tech related, but I just have recently learned a lot about the Sacklers and how monsters they are. And this number is it's still too low. It's paltry. Yeah. CVS and Walgreens announced opioid settlements totaling 10 billion. That's for multiple countries, though, correct? Yeah. yeah. Walmart has not announced their number yet. There are some other pharmacies, I think, that are still holding out here. But... And they're not admitting wrongdoing. That's the big part. Yeah. They're just like, well, I guess we'll do this. I mean, 10 billion is a lot of money. They're going to try to create, you know, like helpful. Hey, don't get addicted to pills. Signs. Yeah, you know, they're going to create little uh, awareness groups and stuff. Probably a lot of that money is just going to be wasted. I feel like everyone's aware that opioids are addictive at this point because everyone knows, at least here, everyone knows someone who's gotten addicted to pain pills. Do you know the difference between an opiate and an opioid? No. Awareness, Krista. An opiate is derived from a natural source like the poppy plant. Okay. An opioid is one of these, you know, like engineered, super oh. strong synthetic versions. Of okay. That, like fentanyl. Either way, I'd probably try to avoid so them. You should avoid all. Yeah. That's a good idea. Even if someone, you know, offers me one at a party, the correct answer, even though it is rude to your host, is to say no. Yeah. I feel like people don't push too hard because ultimately they're like, I'll just keep that for myself. <laughs> okay, I'll have this for later. <laughs> Puts it back in their pocket. <laughs> and this story, I, you know, this is uh, allegations that just happened right before we started filming. So I imagine yeah. we'll learn more about this. I don't know how true any of this is. He did point out, that uh, this woman made six figures as the lead housekeeper. She managed the team. So she wasn't, you know, it's not like some poor migrant worker. She actually complained that they hired some undocumented people. She didn't like that. But this is on brand for Mr. Bezos, isn't it? Yeah. 14 hour work days with no break and no bathroom. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos sued by his former housekeeper. My favorite snippet that I saw of this was something about like people having to climb through windows to get to a bathroom offsite. So the rule was, but he told her this when he hired her, you must work around the family, right? So if the family is in the home, you can't cross through wherever they are. You have to find another route to get to what you need to clean. If they're in a room, you don't clean that. It's room. like zones in room world. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. Except the constantly moving. Yeah. And you have to know where they are. So there were times when the bathroom that they were allowed to use was cut off by a member of the Bezos family in another room. And so then they would have to go out a window. <laughs> I, what I am curious about here is like, I don't know, I, I haven't really hired a housekeeper myself, but I know some people who have. And like, typically you have the housekeeper come over like once a week or once every two weeks, and then you leave for like an hour while they do their job. No, this is full-time staff. 
How also, dirty are you getting the house that you're having to do that that often? I guess it's a big house, but oh, they wanted to be spotless the entire time. You know, I mean, these people live in a different world than we do. Yeah. The other great thing about it was the bathroom they were allowed to use was in a maintenance shed slash power substation because that's the size of this house. What What's weirder about that is like they can't afford to have like a a staff room like in Parkitect where you have bathrooms for the staff to use. They can just assign one of the. I'm sure they got a ton of empty rooms in the house, right? Yeah. Like, it's got to be. This is the staff wing. We don't go yeah. to the staff wing. Can put a put like a an arcade machine in there. Maybe a Pepsi machine. This is a lot like Parkitect, actually, because in Parkitect, your guests don't like to see your staff like moving boxes and stuff. So you have to build underground tunnels. Maybe well, that's what Bezos should do. Imagine if he invited another billionaire. Let's say he invited Jeffrey Epstein over for dinner mm. at some point. Do you think Jeffrey Epstein wants to see a housekeeper? Ever? Well, you know, no one wants to see Jeffrey because he's corpse. Well, corpse pre, obsession. Pre suicide. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing. You're guessing, but it could just be his reanimated corpse, too. I just realized I don't think I put social media in this list. This was all business, wasn't it? Oh, wait. Did we not do any social? I don't think we did because we oh, didn't do any wow. of the Twitter stuff. Oh, yeah. We, we briefly touched Elon, but nothing else. I did this last week because it's so long. All right. Well, there's going to be like a weird cut here, and then we'll combo these sections again. Oh. Oh, the, we just dropped out of the universe to do another section that we forgot. And you had a exciting I peanut. I had, I had the bacon flavor. Very good. It's very crunchy, so it was good. I didn't eat it on the mic, but mm. the bacon jam bacon. can confirm. Would you say that that's your jam? I would say those are good. I sat there and ate a bunch of them while we sorted stories. Adding bacon to things is a, like a, it's a trope, but it almost always works. Yeah. Have you had, I want to try the, uh, what's the fast food place that we don't have them here, but they offer the bacon milkshake. Chat will know. Was it rallies? No, we don't have them here. It's what it's like five guys or what a burger. It's one of those that we don't have. All have, the comments will be. They have a brand. bacon milkshake. I'm, that probably would be good. I mean, it's salty sweet and always works. Yeah. You know what always, this might be a little bit too inside baseball, but somebody very close to you hates salty and sweet. And I find yeah, that so yeah. bizarre. He doesn't like um, salads with like fruit in it. It's madness. Chicken salad with grapes in it. He hates it. Oh, it's so good. He also hates raisins. Wow. Uh, and we, we just planted grapevines. It's so great. <laughs> he's out there like tearing them down. Right now. <laughs> these... I can't let you find out. He's going to blame the dog. <laughs> Well, we forgot to do social media. Somehow I sorted without social media. We had so many business stories, but once we look, realized, like, what, where are the Elon Musk stories? Because uh -huh. that's all that social media is going to be this week. Elon Musk planning to cut half of Twitter's workforce report. It's a large number, like thousands of people. I don't remember what it was now, but. Now, there was the story that he was going to fire them on Monday. Yeah. Turned out that wasn't true. So they will get their quarterly dividend payout or whatever that was they're also supposed to get like a 60 day severance package i believe something like that um there is already a class action suit to stop him from doing that Can by the time this comes out i'm sure some new fresh hell will have surfaced during this debacle so can you imagine working for a monster like him after you've won a lawsuit he would make you miserable it's also bringing everybody back to the office they're shutting down buildings I think they were bringing people back to the office because there was some sort of internal thing that was like, if you do that, half the people will just leave on their own. We mm -hmm. won't have to pay severance. Too. And he has, of course, fired the uh, censorship czar mm -hmm. girl. And it looks like her team has been detoothed. Twitter reportedly limits employee access to content moderation tools as midterm election nears. Some of you may have noticed the hashtag trending Trump is dead the other day. And there was a, a rumor about him being dead, right? Yeah, people were doing it just to prove, like, moderation. Oh, you need to moderate this. Yeah, yeah, because, well, it's misinformation, but if we spam it enough, it'll end up on trending on Twitter. Wow, if Trump dies, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? That would change everything. Oh. So, uh, yeah, there, there used to be that almost everybody had access to this, which seems maybe a little too much. Although, I don't know, like, when it comes to censorship, isn't it better to have more people with more varying views having think, access instead of one? I don't think there's a lot of varying views inside of Twitter uh. at that point. Although Elon seems to want to make it the same, but just in the other direction. 
Right. Yeah, so it's like that's a, a net negative either way. And maybe the most controversial change he introduced this week. Now, of course, we have to remember Elon Musk tweets a lot of stuff that never happens. Like he loves to just he loves the attention. Yeah, he's a shit and poster. He is just bathing it. He's like a lizard on a rock with a sun lamp on top of him right now. With a, he's just he's soaking it in. He's loving it. Elon Musk says Twitter Blue, the check, will cost eight dollars and include blue tick verification. Now, he originally said $20, and a lot of people got angry, and then he was like, well, what about 8 Which seems like maybe that was always the plan to make it $8. But uh, He is a businessman. He knows yeah. how, to, how to play that game. So a lot of people attacked him over that. The, my favorite one was AOC, who crapped on it, and was like, you know, how could you do this? And then he pointed out that she sells a $48 sweatshirt on her website. She defended it. At least you can wear the sweatshirt. What you the could, hell do you get with a blue tick? You could get a t-shirt with your blue check on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've never had any desire to have the blue check. No. Chair. Well, and I feel like by making it something you can just pay for, it kind of loses its allure. Because it used to be like if you were a real celebrity, you would get the blue check. You'd get verified yeah. so people knew you weren't a fan account. But you had to be a real celebrity who agreed with Twitter's point of view. That was the problem. Well, there's, there's lots of people who still have it. Most of the people who don't agree with the Twitter's point of view have been banned at this point. They don't have anything. But yeah, I figure uh, like the worst kind of person will want this, right? Well, yeah, people will pay for it just because they want that. But again, I think that devalues it. If anyone can get it, why why get it? I think Twitter in That's general like is being Oak-Tour. devalued. Right? Yeah. Like Twitter does not have the uh, social cachet that it always did. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad. I I can kind of, what's weird about Twitter as a social media platform, it's one of those places that I feel like I can take or leave. Like I don't feel any sort of real addiction to it. It's just like, okay, I'll come here and check this from time to time. But Wendell is hopelessly addicted to it. Like some people. And we're using it now as a source of what's going on in the world. That's the power of it. And like, that's, uh, we we cover stories. Yeah. So what I like to do is I'll see a news story. And then I go to Twitter and go to latest because sometimes you can get stuff for, like from on the ground as people tweet it out. I like the live streams yeah. they do on there and stuff like that. There's some good parts about There's it. There's some good sure. parts of Twitter. Not a lot. Not $8 worth. But like I say, most people who disagreed with the, the narrative are gone from Twitter. And the big question is, will they come back? And the big name is, will Donald Trump be allowed back? And Musk is not yet ready to step on that landmine. Twitter will not reinstate banned users without a clear process, Musk says. The process is not disclosed about what that would look like. He's going to get their $8 first. No. Uh. And I guess, you know, like now that he's in charge, he just wants to shake everything up. He wants to see what, I think he's just throwing stuff against the wall here, right? It feels, yeah, a little happens. desperate. Chief Twit Elon Musk signals interest in reviving Vine. A little bit of editorializing in that headline, but... Chief Twit, because that's what he changed his Twitter bio to be. He has mm. since changed it again to represent the nightmare that he's having trying to support all these different complaints. <laughs> Welcome to moderation. You brought this on yourself. It's only going to get worse. But Vine, it seems like he's wanting to do that maybe to compete with TikTok. But Twitter already supports video. What's that? What would that look like? These are going to be uh, limited to 60 seconds. And probably that same kind of algorithmic. Will this mean he will start supporting the U.S. banning TikTok? Will we start seeing him oh my God, point yes. for that legislation? He was probably never against that, was he? Uh, well, he, he has deals in China. Uh, yeah, He does have the China Tesla sales are big. That's going to put him in a weird spot, isn't it? Yeah. Stay tuned for more next week. This was kind of a repetition of the story we did earlier in government. It literally references it in the article. Yeah, that's just a a more specific part of it. We won't go into it much. Facebook has a special portal for government officials to request user content be throttled or suppressed for vaguely defined disinformation, report says. That is true. We learned that from Mark Zuckerberg, but we learned it a while back. Yeah. We got a little bit more information, I think, from those leaked documents, but yeah, they're still doing it. Mm -hmm. Facebook is dying, so... Maybe it won't matter eventually. The only part of Facebook that matters is the marketplace. We all know this. And Kanye West, God bless him. He's not backing down. He's sticking with his, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, 
anti-Semiticism, I think. Semiticism? Semiticism. 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 Uh, you do have to admit, though, that, you know, the old uh, saying about if you want to know, you know, like, who's oppressing you, find out who you can't say anything bad about. You're not allowed. <laughs> He's proven that. Ye suspended from Instagram again after targeting Jewish people in post. I feel like this man is, he's just kind of losing it. Yeah. He has uh, gone to Parler, looking to buy it, obviously. Yeah. And that is where he announced this because he's been banned from pretty much everywhere else. He posted some screenshots of chats with uh, another um, mogul in his community. Who was it? I don't remember. I don't know. Another hip hop guy. And that guy was oh, Russell Simmons. And Russell Simmons was kind of like, you know, gently trying to, it's like, dude, you have to stop. Just, just, yeah. Is this worth tanking your career? He seemed to think so and posted it and was immediately banned. And so now he's only on Parlor. I could do without ever hearing from Kanye again. Yeah. He made a couple good albums many years ago. Some of his music's not bad, but uh, I don't think it was groundbreaking. Uh, and Instagram, boy, are they late to the party. Instagram jumps into NFTs with minting and selling feature. Nah, son. You think it'll take off? No. I think they were saying you could change your profile image to an NFT, which, okay, yeah. I can do that now. And they also, there's going to be some kind of royalties. I don't know how any of that is going to work. Uh, they got... Some kind of poly, oh, the same Polygon blockchain that uh, JP Morgan's using. Mm. A big day for them, huh? I just can't care about NFTs. I thought no. maybe NFTs were going to go away a while, but I think we're just in a lull and it's going to come screaming back at some point. I guess. I, I just don't get the appeal. But maybe when we all live in the metaverse, NFTs will be important. What if I refuse to move into the metaverse? Then you die in real life. <laughs> so they, don't, they won't allow that. <laughs> Citizen, put your VR headset back on. There's going to be a, like a stormtroopers are going to come to your house and they're going to be wearing their headsets that show you as something completely different. And then they're going to gun you down. And they're going to get your house as digital real estate. <laughs> but they can't actually hit you with their their laser guns because the model, your character model in the metaverse doesn't match up with how you look IRL. No, that would replace me with something else. Like a guy in a ski mask with a, mm. a knife or something like that. Still close enough that they could hit. Yeah. The hitbox will be my shape. They'll just change, you know, some of the things. Yeah. Still humanoid. Well, uh, TikTok. Now, if you remember, TikTok has guaranteed us, us being the United States, that our information is not getting leaked to China. Now, some people claim to have disproven that and, you know, shown that, yes, there were people in China with administrative accounts. This does not make me feel better about that. TikTok tells European users its staff in China get access to their data. Surprising only people who have never read anything about TikTok ever. Not just China. Also, there's some in South America and Israel. So anywhere, yeah, anywhere that there's a an administrative user with that level of access, yeah, that country can get to it because that person can get to it. So maybe just don't trust any of them. Maybe only have people moderate the EU who are in the EU. You're a big company; you can afford that, right? Hire some people. And the Twitter exodus has not been too extreme. It seems like a lot of people are still using Twitter. And it's still an ongoing thing. But some of the hardliners did follow up with what they threatened. They left. Mastodon gained 70,000 users after Musk's Twitter takeover. I joined them. Now, maybe I'm misremembering this, but they in the article they described Mastodon as left-leaning. I thought it was originally a right thing. Am I wrong about that? You're thinking of uh, Truth Social. Maybe? I don't know. But the, my favorite part of this article is that instead of a tweet, what you post on there is called a toot. Which I imagine, in my mind, is a Mastodon fart. Yeah, but right? you, can also, you can also privately toot. Is that just like a little... <laughs> I try. That's how I try to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You go off, find a Go covert. Yourself. 
you don't want to crop dust a group of people. That's, yeah. That's not nice. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I'm not using Mastodon. It, I don't too it, much about it. The description in this article, I thought, just sounded like Reddit. Like a mix between Reddit and, but it's not, and it's, Twitter. It's federated, so there's not just one Mastodon, right? Right. It's kind of like, you know how in the World of Warcraft, for example, you're familiar with that. When you play World of Warcraft, you're not playing with everybody playing World of Warcraft. You're on a server. Right. And there's different servers. But the Mastodon servers can intercommunicate. Yeah. So the problem with that is, and he kind of, uh, Wilford Chan kind of points out that you have to be somewhat tech savvy to mm. get into Mastodon. Like my parents are never going to use Mastodon. They're also not Twitter users, but they might be able to figure that out. I don't think they would ever figure out Mastodon. My mom struggles because Twitter apparently now, like if you send someone a tweet and they're not logged in, apparently you won't be able to see it always. Like half the time it doesn't show up. So I'll send my mom a tweet from Chris Bailey, our local weatherman. And I'm like, oh, watch out for this storm. And she's like, I can't see that. Oh, she clicks on it. Yeah. And like, because she doesn't have an account, she can't see that tweet. How do you send it to her? You send her a link? Yeah, I send her uh, a link. I, see what I don't know. So my mom definitely couldn't do this. She can't handle that either. I'm not looking to... I mean, I don't, I'm not a big Twitter user either, but I'm not looking to join any new... No. New thing. I like to have a, a place to, like, share pics. So, like, I, I have a garden thread that I use on the forum. And I've posted some gardening stuff on Twitter, but neither of those are really, like, the best place. That is... The one thing I do like about Twitter, though, like there are some accounts on Twitter that just have great cat videos. Yeah. That's a great use of Twitter. Yeah, I like people who just, you know, post things that bring them joy, but a lot of people don't use it for that. Yeah, people want to fight. Mm. People want to fight on Twitter, and that's the wrong thing to do. But it's popular, and I don't think it's going away. But one thing that did go away that's coming back that we all need more of in our lives. <laughs> Tumblr will now allow nudity, but not explicit sex. That might get us demonetized. So <laughs> the rules are nudity is okay. Previously, the female nipple was where they drew the line. Oh. Anything that included the female nipple, nipple was con considered nudity. Of course, uh, genitalia. I don't know about a, a bare butt. Do you think they would lay a bare butt? on? I don't know that they were ever really uh, monitoring this. Oh, yeah. They banned a bunch of people. Well, they said they were, but I mean, it's not hard to find. They probably stopped. Yeah. Doing it so hard after that. This was the whole, uh, remember the big controversy where there, it was like children were being victimized? Yeah. Well, there's a huge fandom community on Tumblr and like you can literally just put in like Lord of the Rings and like half the stuff is smut fic. Because that's, what's, that's yeah. what spills. So the new guidelines are artistic nudes are okay. Where do you draw the line on artistic nudes? Well, apparently if you're only focusing on the genitals, mm. that's no longer art. That is just pictures of genitals so i don't know how much more like you think you could go knee to belly button would that be okay I, they're not gonna someone needs to test all these things um oh the tumblr community's probably already started yeah. pushing the limits on also that. If, if it's a furry nude is that okay that's art right? there's some poor content moderator <laughs> who's like Again, having to go through all this stuff and like determine what's what it is and isn't okay. I think I would rather be the Tumblr nude moderator than the Facebook like, or Twitter child exploitation yeah. animal murder moderator. Those seem really nasty. I'm sure that stuff pops up on Twitter too, unfortunately, but maybe not in the same quantity as Facebook. Apparently, Google Images having a big uh, child exploitation issue right People now. People suck. That's a such a wildly public place to do that, though. Like, how? What do you expect to get away with there? Apparently, there's enough of it that it doesn't matter. Like, people just keep flooding it with it. That's awful. How crazy that there's so much of it out there. Uh. Well, that's our. Uh, you won't notice any difference here, but this is our second recording of that. This is going to be 17 minutes plus 40. Oh, this is going to break an hour. Oh, people are going to love that. They love when that happens. Some people do. Some people complain. Maybe we should cater to the ones that like it, though, right? Because then they'd like more of us. Mm. That does do more for my ego. You know what? How does Teki Sava feel about it? Oh, yeah. Those nuts are good. I never know how to pronounce his name, do you? I say Teki Sava. That's what it's going to be from now on, whether he likes it or not. Like, whenever I've done the Minecraft videos, I've always said Teki Sava. Or, like, in chat. I don't know what Sattva is, though, do you? No. Yeah, and that, who knows what we're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say more of it on Friday when we bring you... 
robot nonsense.